Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade functional equation. What does that mean? That means I came up with this idea and it's a functional equation. A functional equation is basically an equation where you solve for a function like f of x. We're going to try to find an expression for f of x in terms of x. So, how do you solve a problem like this? There's quite a few different ways to approach it. You can guess and check, but that doesn't necessarily give you all the solutions. But in this case, I kind of want my x values to be greater than or equal to zero. Obviously, we need that requirement because of the square root of x, right? So if you look at this expression carefully, or the equation, you notice that f of x and square root of x, f of y and square root of y, and f of x plus y and square root of x plus y actually matches up nicely. Why is that happening? That's a good question. And you'll notice what happens towards the end, okay? Why is this happening? So definitely f of x equals square root of x is going to work because if you replace f of x with square root of x, then it's a solution. But how can you guarantee that you found all the solutions? So that's why we need a more systematic approach. And unfortunately, there is no clear-cut solution methods for functional equations, even though there are quite a few good strategies, such as replacing x with special values, such as 0, 1, and negative 1, replacing x with y, y with x, and then sometimes you can do replace x with y plus f of y or uh, x with x plus y, and you can do so many different things, right? Uh, you, and when you have x and y like two variables, you kind of have more freedom, right? You can use different values for x and y. Some functional equations only contain one variable. Those are usually easier to solve, but these are more fun. So how do we go about solving a problem like this? So we're going to be exploring a couple of things here. First of all, is square root of x the only solution to this equation? What do you think? Comment down below. And then we're going to check our work at the end. The second thing we need to look at is, can AI solve this problem? That's one of the biggest questions that we need to answer uh, in 2025, right? Because AI is a hype or is it not a hype? So we're going to find out. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem one more time. We have f of x plus f of y minus f of x plus y equals square root of x plus square root of y minus square root of x plus y. So this is what I was trying to say when I said f of x matches up with square root of x nicely. It means that if f of x equals square root of x, then this equation works. But that doesn't necessarily mean if this equation works, then f of x equals square root of x. You see, the implication is not necessarily two ways. So that's what we're going to explore. So here's what we're going to do to solve this problem. And when you have this type of symmetry or one-to-one uh, -one correspondence, you can definitely use a very special strategy, uh, which I'm going to show you. That applies to a number of problems, which we're probably going to do on this channel. And I've done some problems before, too. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the x's together and the y's together and the x plus y's together. Because in this case, x plus y is just like another variable but depends on x and y, of course. It's not like f of z, right? Now, here is another question, maybe just a follow-up question, something to think about. What would happen if I told you, okay, this is satisfied? Then could you safely say that, well, obviously, f of x equals square root of x is a solution, but is that the only solution in this case? What do you think? Let me know what you think. So let's go ahead and focus on this equation now. We don't need to worry about it. I just wanted to pause the question real quick. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract f of x. Uh, sorry, f of, we're going to subtract square root of x. And then we're going to subtract square root of y. And then we're going to add this on the right-hand side. The reason being, uh, we want to have the variables, the compatible variables together, like x with x, y with y. You see what I'm talking about? Let me show you. x with x, y with y, and x plus y with y, x plus y. You get the idea? So that's the whole purpose. Now, why did I do this? Because I'm about to do a very magical, or should I say mathematical touch to this equation, which will solve this problem and so many other problems. And here's how it is. 
since we see a repetition of this pattern, we're going to call this another function. How about g of x? I don't know why they use f of x, g of x, and h of x. Probably because they are in alphabetical order. Uh, I of x is not very common. Maybe for identity functions, sometimes they use it because i is identity. Anyways, it's also the square root of negative 1. That's another story because I have another channel called a plus bi. Go ahead and make sure to check it out. Anyways, that's about complex numbers. This is about algebra. So let's get back to this. So once you call that thing g of x, something miraculous, almost miraculous happens. This becomes g of y, and this becomes g of x plus y. Okay? And what does that mean? That means something amazing. g of x plus g of y plus g of x plus y. How nice. What does this remind you? If you said Cauchy, you got it. A French mathematician, right? Because he came up with fundamentally really nice functional equations like, you know, f of x plus f of y or g of x plus g of y equals g of x plus y, g of x times g of y equals g of x, y, so on and so forth. There's four different kinds and they're all Cauchy equations because you can take one and convert it to the other. And of course, there are some requirements. We, we didn't talk about the domain. Well, actually, I talked about the domain, didn't I? I said X needs to be greater or equal to zero. So it's non-negative real numbers. And with Cauchy, you can talk about continuity, differentiability. I don't know. So this equation has a very simple solution. Did you know that? It is actually, if you think about it, we have a sum, a function that turns a sum into a sum. What could that be? Could it be x? x works, but 2x also works. In general, mx works. So m is any constant. It could also be 0 because the 0 function, something that is identically 0, will also work because 0 plus 0 equals 0. You see how nice function equations are, right? They have a lot of solutions in this case. So g of x equals m of mx is a solution where m is a real constant. And maybe, yes, it has to be real. So what does that mean? It means that f of x minus square root of x, which happens to be g of x, is equal to mx. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? From here, we get f of x equals mx plus square root of x. Again, m is a real constant. It can be positive, negative, or zero. But of course, x values always need to be greater than or equal to zero. That's our domain. What does that mean? It means that m can also be zero. And that explains a lot. Why? Because if m is 0, then f of x is square root of x, which was the original equation which you found by guess and check. What happens if m is 1? That was my original thought, by the way. Let me give you a secret. The way I came up with this problem was I started with this, and then how can I turn this into a functional equation? I kind of subtracted, you know, just set f of x equal to this, and then subtracted root square root of x from both sides, and then turn it into an equation. That's how this problem came about. That's why x plus square root of x is also a solution like many others. Now, here's the million dollar, million dollar question. Can AI, or Wolfram Alpha in this case, and some people are offended when I call it AI, because it's not, right? Obviously, whatever it is, Wolfram Alpha, can it solve this problem? In general, can AI solve this problem? So let's go ahead and find out. Okay, ta-da-da-da, too bad Wolfram Alpha does not even understand my query. Not that it, my query is super complicated, but it has its shortcomings. What about AI, though? In general, do you think we can ask this question to ChatGPT or uh, Copilot or any other AI, Gemini, whatever AI? Do you think it can solve it? Please let us know if you can find a solution because I haven't tried it. I'm lazy. I want you to go ahead and give it a try and see if you can find a solution from AI. I don't think so. I think AI has still uh, lots of shortcomings. Can't solve advanced math problems at this point. Maybe in the future, maybe it can never solve some of the math problems. Anyways, human beings are always smarter. Don't forget that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.